It's about as much authority as I have around here. Bang a gavel. Just exercising my wrists. I don't think so. Hello, welcome everyone. My name is David Greenfield. I'm the council member from the 44th Council District in Brooklyn. I'm privileged to serve as the chair of the Land Use Committee. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee who have joined us today. I want to welcome Council Members Gorodnik, Council Member Mendez, Council Member Rodriguez, Council Member Koo, Council Member Lander, Council Member Levin, Council Member Williams, Council Member Wills, Council Member Richards, Council Member Cohn, Council Member Kalos, Council Member Torres, Council Member Traeger, and Council Member Salamanca. I want to thank Chair Salamanca, Chair Richards, and Chair Koo for their outstanding work on our land use subcommittees. Today we'll be voting to approve all of the items on our calendar except for LU 635, 649, and 650, which we will vote to approve with modifications, and LUs 643 and 644, the 251 Front Street application, which we will move to file as the application has been withdrawn. Four of the items we will approve are sidewalk cafes, LU 631. Pate Palo, LU 632, Barking Dog, LU 647, Predamange, and LU 648 are all applications for revocable consents for unenclosed sidewalk cafes in Manhattan. These applications are in Councilmember Rodriguez's district, Councilmember Kalos's district, and Councilmember Mendez's district. The next series of items are zoning and text map amendments. The 13 15 Greenpoint Avenue application, LU, six, LU number 635. In Council Member 11's district, is for a zoning text amendment establishing Section 62-356 of the zoning resolution, which would treat the lot line separating the development site from the WNYC Transmitter Park, a lovely park, by the way, as a street line for purposes of applying bulk regulations. We will be voting on modifications that would increase the required setback for the park from 28 feet on the residential portion containing legally required windows, prohibit balconies on the side of the building facing the park, and require a 6 to 10 foot wall separating the park from the development site. These modifications would help ensure a harmonious transition from public public to private space. The developers also agreed to set back beyond the distance mandated by the zoning text for the commercial portion from 8 feet to 18 feet. All parties seem to be pleased by this compromise. We will also be voting to modify the Watson Avenue rezoning, LU 649 and 650 in Council Member Palmas District. This application is for a zoning map amendment to change the project area from an R5C1-2 to an R7AC1-4 and a text amendment to create a mandatory inclusionary housing area. The application currently proposes option number two. Our modification would change the text amendment to MIH option one, requiring 25% of the floor area averaging at 60% of AMI. This application will create 286 new residential units in a ground floor retail. I want to congratulate Council Councilmembers Levin and Palma on these modifications, which will improve these two projects considerably. The next seven items, LU 656, 657, 658, 661, 664, 665, 667, are known as the POMP applications for tax exemptions pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. These properties were acquired in REM by the City of New York and then disposed of through the private owner management program to the sponsor, hence the clever term POMP. This portfolio does not currently have any regulatory restrictions other than rent regulation. The tax exemptions will result in a regulatory agreement restricting the rents to 50 to 75 percent of AMI. Depending on the project locations, these buildings are in the district of Council Members Cabrera, Torres, and Salamanca. The next four items, LU-668, Neighborhood Stabilization Associates 1, LU-669, Neighborhood Stabilization Associates 2, LU-670, 6th Avenue Rehab 1, and LU-671, Sunset Park Housing Associates are for a new 30-year tax exemption to preserve affordability including Section 8 affordability, existing rental housing in Councilmember Menchaca's district in Brooklyn. The last item for our vote to approve is LU673, Lexington Gardens 2, and Speaker Melissa Margarito's district. The project was approved in 2016, but there have been changes to the affordability mix. So an amendment to the UDAP and a new Article 11 tax exemptions are being sought. The local council members are all in support of these applications. Are there any questions or remarks on these applications? Hearing now, we will now move on to a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees to approve LU 631, 632, 647, 648, 656, 657, 658, 661, 664, 665, 667, 668, 669, 670, 671, 673, and to approve with the modifications I have described LU 635 and LU 649 and 650, and to file LU 643 and 644 to remove this application from the calendar. Will the clerk please call the roll? Sure. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Greenfield. I vote aye and all. Mealy. I vote aye on all. Mendez. Aye. Ku. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. 
The vote aye, and I want to thank uh, uh, Chair Richards and uh, Chair Greenfield, as well as the land use staff, for working uh, with me and uh, the both affected communities in the Greenpoint Williamsburg community uh, with respect to the 1315 Greenpoint Avenue uh, project and with um, the Vinegar Hill community at the 251 Front Street application. I also want to acknowledge the Vinegar Hill Association, the Friends of Transmitter Park. Um, as well as uh, the applicant for 251 uh, Front Street for making a good faith effort uh, to uh, uh, go through the issues uh, with us. Unfortunately, we were uh, unable to, um, uh, to reach a conclusion that was uh, going to be satisfactory and, and, and therefore um, uh, they opted to withdraw the application. Um, but I do want to acknowledge um, that they uh, made a good faith effort and uh, uh, we uh, certainly respect um, the amount of work that they put into this application. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilmember. Grodnick. Rose. Aye. Williams. Aye. Wills. Aye. Richards. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. We have a vote of 13 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted. Folks, we're going to keep the roll open for 15 more minutes. If you can just hold on just for one more minute, folks, just one more minute. Today is the last land use committee for the longest serving member of the land use division, Peter Janicek. Peter. <laughs> Folks, Peter started working here in February of 1985. There's actually a council member who was born in 1988. So that's pretty impressive. He was the council liaison to the Board of Estimate. For those of you who are youngsters, you can Google that and you can find information about what the Board of Estimate was. He has more experience working here and more institutional knowledge than literally everyone, anyone I've ever met uh, in my time as the chair of the Land Use Committee. He's been a trusted advisor to hundreds of council members, to dozens of city agencies. His work at the council has covered a wide array of projects from the Coordinated Street Furniture Franchise, which shaped the way of how our streets look, to the 42nd Street Light Rail, and even the Yankee Stadium project. The truth is that what makes Peter stand out is his incredible diligence and his dedication, especially to the painstaking work that we force him to do when we call up those sidewalk cafes. And thank you for that, Peter. Despite my best attempts at convincing Peter to get samples while visiting those sidewalk cafes, he had resisted for more than 30 years. He has an uncanny ability to identify issues and then work hard to reach a fair and equitable solution with, with the applicants. This is the kind of hard work and good government focus that really people don't appreciate, but it's the work that makes our city function so well. And Peter has worked with tens of thousands of small businesses across New York to help them stay in business and ensuring that our community needs are being resolved. Peter is an extraordinarily proud dad to Aaron and Laura and a husband to Peg. I know he's eager to spend more time with them and in Florida and take care of his beautiful home in Staten Island. But we will miss him here. We admire him. We respect him. And we are so grateful for his years of service and for his wisdom. And I will tell you that whenever we have an intractable problem, we would sit around the conference room and then we'd say, where's Peter? And Peter would come in and somehow he would manage to solve what seemed like some of the most difficult technical issues in the city of New York. Peter, we pay huge respect to you. We tip our hat to you. You will be missed and we congratulate you upon your retirement. Let's give Peter a big round of applause. So we're going to keep the vote open for 15 more minutes. Please join us for cake.
Please join us for cake and some non-alcoholic beverages, and the clerk will continue to call the roll. Thank you. Council Member, excuse me. Yeah. Council Member Cohen. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Torres. Aye. Peter, would you like to say a few words?